I get told a lot of secrets about things happening on Discord, but there's this secret that I have to tell you. A popular Discord bot called Mushroom suffered a data breach, and it seems like they don't want you to know, because it's pretty embarrassing how it happened. Now, Mushroom is both a Discord bot and a website. The Discord bot tracks what games you play and gives you quests that you can complete to earn coins, and when you use those coins, you can buy pets or pointless images. It's just like NFTs, but you aren't spending actual money or going blind. Now, the Mushroom website, on the other hand, is not as appealing. In fact, it's basically just like Instagram for gamers. So you'll have screenshots from video games. You'll have uh, stolen memes. And of course, at some point, if you scroll long enough, you'll see something that is so completely mind-numbing that you forgot what you're talking about. Now, obviously, I am not the target demographic for this bot. I'm old, I'm balding, and I yell at the TV. But there is something seriously concerning about this mushroom bot that everyone should know, and it has to do with how it got breached in the first place. February 28th, 2023. A security researcher is browsing a website, which is like Google, but for internet security, browsing and browsing until they came across something new, a test server from Mushroom.gg. Now inside of this test server was a database, and this database contained 28 million entries of user information and 5 million entries for Discord servers. Now it should be noted that this Discord bot is in 140,000 Discord servers, but I do want to point out that these 28 million entries could potentially be 28 million Discord users having their data exposed publicly. Now let's take a step back for a second. This is a testing server. It's not the official Mushroom server, it's just a testing server. And usually in a perfect world, we would use some sort of anonymized, randomly generated data, or dummy data. But here's the thing, a lot of companies will use production data. Now the reason why you use production data over dummy data is the fact that it's usually faster and less expensive. Also, it's real data, so you can validate whether or not what you're doing works. But it does come with some risks. For example, what happens if that information gets breached, like we've seen in this mushroom data breach? So what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to secure this data properly, and if there's any personally identifying information, you are supposed to either scramble it, substitute it with something else, or just change it up entirely. This is the real information of your customers, and keeping this data secure is number one priority. Well, the database and the test server had one fatal flaw. Can you guess it? It had no password. Both the database and the server had no password. Bruh. What what are you guys doing? From around December 15th, 2022 to February 28th, 2023, for an estimated 75 days, this information was open to the public and not secured with any password. The, the data is just sitting there, waiting for either a villain to exploit it and try to sell it to someone, or a hero to try and secure it. And here's the main thing I really want to stress. We don't know if that information was accessed by someone malicious. It was available on the internet, no password for 75 days. I would pretty much assume someone must have stumbled upon it, but we'll never know. Thankfully for us, our security researcher was a hero and not a villain, and they actually told Mushroom about this problem and they waited patiently. And they didn't have to wait long, because 30 hours later, Mushroom responded and the security vulnerability was dealt with extremely quickly. So props to Mushroom for getting it fixed that quick. However, let's talk about the information that was exposed. And the first example of information that was stored in the database are ban reasons. Not super important, but the next example is extremely important. You gotta see the mushroom user ID, the Discord user ID, and the Discord email. That's bad. And in fact, Mushroom confirmed themselves that 6,000 users' emails were exposed in the data breach, and this is extremely important for later on. There were also replies to feedback from the bot. There was an access token, which is thankfully encrypted. This would have been so much more of a disaster if it wasn't. And the final example is a bunch of other information that the Discord bot would get when you invite it to your server. Now, the biggest issue out of all of these examples is, in fact, the email. Knowing the email associated with your Discord account opens up to people sending you fake Discord Discord emails. Ooh, free Nitro giveaway. Just uh, click on the sketchy link. And thankfully for me, people are still super skeptical about receiving a Discord email, so much so that in fact, this person here got a real Discord email and they thought it was a scam. So I think we should be good. Now, with an issue like this of Mushroom having their database being unsecured, despite Mushroom's super fast response to fix it, this is still a net negative situation. And the first bad thing to look at is Discord. Now, when this vulnerability was found, the security researcher actually contacted Discord.
Discord. And Discord responded saying, this is something that we do not tolerate and does violate our TOS. And unfortunately, no action was taken on Discord's side, so they followed up and, uh, nothing happened. And speaking of doing nothing, Mushroom did absolutely nothing in terms of disclosing this data vulnerability, and that's why I'm making this video. Now, I do want to point out that when a company has a data breach, they have to analyze what information was available, if any information was taken, and they have to disclose it. In fact, in the GDPR, which is like the European Union's way of making companies actually be ethical, it says, in the case of a personal data breach, the controller shall, not later than 72 hours after having become aware of it, notify the personal data breach to the supervisory authority competent in a... Let's just break this down and make it simple. If there's sensitive information, company must tell people. So after 72 hours, you would assume Mushroom does something, but they stayed quiet. Now, I was aware of this situation while it was unfolding, and I reached out to their community manager for comment, and I got no response. It has been eight months, and Mushroom, just like my dad who left to get the milk and never came back, probably assumed that time heals all wounds. But nope, I'm still bitter about this, and that's why I'm still making a video, baby. And also, fun little fact, our little computer gamer here managed to remind Mushroom three separate times to disclose properly. And even I reminded Mushroom, and Mushroom didn't disclose anything. Now, the tomfoolery of Mushroom doesn't stop here, though, because back in the start of February, our security researcher found another Mushroom issue. They discovered two public Redis instances linking them back in which they are being abused for cryptocurrency mining. And it turns out, this is a common thing. Exposed Redis instances abused for remote code execution and cryptocurrency mining. Back in good old 2020, baby. Mushroom security is kind of hot garbage right now. Now, I want to point out that having a cryptocurrency miner running on your servers, as well as having an unsecured test server, would be something you would expect from a small bot. And Mushroom.gg isn't a small bot. Remember, it has 140,000 Discord servers, and it has 28 million entries of user data. But they also have a pretty big wallet, because they spend a lot of money to advertise on top.gg. Now, I would show you how much they spend on top.gg, but unfortunately, they turned off the bid history, probably because of me. But thankfully, I have old footage from way long ago, but you can see that there are thousands of dollars worth of advertising money being thrown around on top.gg. Now, throwing around a whole bunch of advertising money is not a bad thing, but I want to point out that they could use that money to uh, maybe hire someone that knows how to put a password on a server. All right, I think that's my limit of dogging on Mushroom, but I do want to point out that with Mushroom failing to disclose that they had a slight little hiccup, I personally wouldn't feel super comfortable using this bot if I somehow decided I wanted to use this. Anyways, let me know what you think about the bot in the comments, and you can also hit the like button on the way down. Hehe, <laughs> I'm so quirky. Anyways, bye-bye. I love you. Mwah!